Hello everyone, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a button that plays an animation in Roblox Studio. So, let's get started. First things first, you're going to need to make an animation. So, I'm going to just going to create a rig. You can do this for R6 or R15. I prefer R15. Alright. And now what we're going to do is open Animation Editor. Select the rig. And we can call this animation um, anything you want that you want it to play. So, I'm just going to make one where levitate, where the person levitates. Because that's pretty easy to do. So, first of all, you're just going to set the animation priority to action. Just press these three dots up here and set the animation priority. Then we're just going to create a variable for everything. Or not variable, but keyframe. Then we're going to select every single thing. And actually, don't do this. Um, what you're going to do instead is add a keyframe for all of this. And when you add a keyframe for everything, it makes it so the character will not be able to uh, move or anything like that. And then we're just going to make the actual animation for levitating. So at the one second mark, this is where it will be levitating. So copy and paste the keyframes that you made. Use the move, move tool. And we can just um, make the animation. So uh, all you're going to do, put rotate on whatever you want. And if, you, if you're having trouble selecting stuff, you can just go down here and find the, the actual thing. So left upper arm, uh, right here, and just drag it. And now the animations are the same. This looks pretty cool if you ask me. So now if we play it, looks pretty cool. Um, now I think what I'm going to do is also increase the animation priority, or not animation priority, but we're just going to basically just do this where um, animation just goes back to normal so over here paste this copy this paste it um, like over here over here so now it looks pretty cool like this okay now we can export this call it levitate now if this isn't a group game put the creator as your group but if it's just your game or someone else's game then put the creator as you then copy the animation ID I recommend putting the dummy in server storage if you want to animate with it later and then we can create a new animation put the ID as whatever you found and then we can just put this in replicated storage and call this levitate then we're going to make a starter GUI, um, like screen GUI, and we're going to call this interface. Then we can ignore GUI inset and reset on spawn to true. Doesn't really matter if you have it, but it's fine. Now what we're going to do is create a, a text button. And this is going to play the actual animation. So what we're going to do is do levitate, change the portal size pixel, just customize everything you want. Change the color to whatever you want. Decrease the saturation. Doesn't matter, just make it look cool. Um, now UI design is not that hard. Um, it's just pretty simple if you learn how to do it. I've had a lot of practice because that's pretty much all I do nowadays is UI design. Um, and then to make it sure it scales on all devices correctly, press on it, go to plugins, and if you don't have unit conversion or auto scale light, go to toolbox, go to plugins, and go to auto scale light. It should be one of the first ones. Then you can just scale it and position it. Uh, so this may it makes it so it's scaled on all devices and basically all this does is it changes the size from offset to scale so 
instead of just like a specific number of pi uh, pixels, it changes it to a screen scale. It's like um, a part of the aspect ratio. That sounds pretty confusing, but it's it's not really. Um, I've done a bunch of videos on it. So then we can do levitate, name that. Then also, um, I think that should be it for the design. So now just add a local script. And we're going to do, uh, call this manage local animations equals game.upgrade storage. And um, what we're going to do is do a folder, call this animations, and put this in there. And then do dot animations get children. Okay? And then local buttons equals script up parent get children okay and then do for um so now just go ahead and create a script and service script service we can uh make a variable for this called local animations equals game dot create storage dot animations and then local animate equals game dot create storage dot animate okay and then do animate dot on server event connect function and do player and uh, button or actually instead of button just do element local animation equals element or actually animations find for child element dot name and then uh, instead of element dot name if you're just gonna have the text always as that you can do that but I prefer to do name. Okay. Uh, now what we're gonna do is if animation, then local character equals player dot character, local humanoid equals character, find for child humanoid. If character and humanoid, then, and then we're gonna do animation or humanoid load animation animation and then uh, make sure this is a variable so do local anim equals that and then do anim play so that will play and then you can name this to animations now if we go ahead and press play we can see what happens so press levitate and we actually do start to levitate and once you do it once, you can do it plenty of times, and it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. Now, we have one issue right here, element.activated. So, it says it's not a valid member of local script. Basically, um, all this means is, well, if we, go, if we just go to manage down here, it says it's not a valid member. However, um, it it's not a member in the first place it just means if you like press it um, so you don't really have to worry about that now if we press um, now I actually do know one thing that we could possibly do to make this look way cooler we're gonna do local player equals game dot players dot local character or local player local character equals player dot character and then we're gonna do player dot actually um do character well here's what we're gonna do humanoid equals put this variable up here my bad just do local humanoid equals character find for child humanoid and then down here do if humanoid then humanoid load animation animation so it just loads it on the client side and that makes it so um it doesn't look bad so like if we just press it now, as you can see, it automatically did it and it didn't just like buffer. Now if you want them to stand still, you can just anchor the humanoid root part, but um, we're not going to do that in today's episode. Now I can see how this could be uh, an issue, but you can fix this by easily just doing um, this. If, uh, actually hold on. Yeah, I did actually... Um, I do know what this is. So, if element is a text button, 
it in, and then paste that in. So now you shouldn't get that issue, issue as you can see. And now you can levitate as much as you want. Alright guys, that's it for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.